if you run a venture capital fund, you have a lot of drivers and pressures in life, which are that you have people that provide you capital, and they tend to be a lot of strategic investors, like some of the groups up here, big companies like GE and IBM and others. But what a venture capitalist has to do is take that money that it's been provided to invest in companies, and it's a time frame and a capital intensity that really matters. So you have. Uh, four years to go and deploy that capital. Maybe you have hundreds of millions of dollars and you need to find companies to put that capital in, own the percentage of that company, it's a small stake, usually 20 to 30, 40% of the company, and then you have to find a way to get your money back. So you need to grow that company rapidly and find an exit. So that means everyone has to be on the same page. You have to talk to the entrepreneur and say, we're gonna start a company in your basement, we're going to grow it to 250 people and then we're going to take it public if we're lucky or maybe we'll sell it to GE or to Synovus or to somebody. Are you cool with that? And then they have to say yes. So the classic venture model works when you have companies that you can put a couple million dollars into and sell them at some point in, in, in the near term and make a return on it. What happened in clean tech and going back to corporate was, and, and Vicky made a really good point on it, is that in clean tech the world became really big, it meant everything, it meant solar, it meant wind, it meant all kinds of renewable energies, it even meant nuclear, it meant things like that. I can't invest two million dollars in a nuclear company and get out in five years. How do I do that? It is a very broad sector and you saw this rush of money into it, but um, there's a clear division between the hardware intensive infrastructure type companies and a lot of the, what I, what I would call softer clean tech propositions related to energy management. A lot of it's software based, it's easy to get into the market. Um, there's not as much upfront capital needed and there's, a, there's a, a quicker way to get out of the market. And I think that uh, a lot of the traditional VCs that rushed into the market, as, as one um, uh, venture capitalist told me, got their head handed to them on a platter. You know, they, they, they didn't have the patience to, to stick with it. They realized that after a couple of years, wow, this is going to take a long time and several hundreds of millions of dollars. And, um, and it was happening at a time when the, the economy started to go sour. Yeah. But, um, but you've seen this kind of um, uh, retrenching in the sector where there is a lot more money flowing into energy management and those things that are considered safe bets. But the problem is, is it's leaving a lot of these infrastructure plays hanging, which is why yeah, I think there's an importance here for, for corporate venturing that is strategic and more patient. We made investments that uh, are complementary to our core businesses, and we got into clean electricity because electricity is our biggest operating expense, and wanted to be able to pr provide the power that we consume. We want to generate a clean kilowatt for every kilowatt that we actually consume in our pipeline operations. And clean electricity oftentimes provides us with a lower risk profile too because it doesn't use fuel and you don't have the fluctuating electricity prices associated with hydrocarbon sources. And so it was complementary to our core businesses and we have got into both wind and solar as sources of clean electricity and we got in very modestly. They've grown uh, into now to the point where we have a couple billion, billion dollars deployed in wind and solar projects. With my role now has been to try to look for uh, emerging technologies that are complementary to those businesses. So for instance, in, in Morgan Solar, we were looking for a technology that had the promise to reduce the price of solar photovoltaic down to that which would be competitive with ground power sources. And uh, we think that Morgan Solar is, is, has very promising technology that uh, has the potential to do that as well as any technology that we've evaluated. And what we hope to do is to enable them to help give them the support to bring that technology to commercial fruition to the point that we could then deploy it on our own actual projects. And we can embrace that technology and buy the product and use that in the field deployment of projects that we would own and operate across North America to provide electricity into the grid. So our venture capital is to enable these promising technologies that we would then deploy out in the field in hopefully billion dollar investments in the future. First looked at uh, starting our investment strategy, we selected the two key areas which were energy and water and we determined that what we really wanted to do were find the leading horses that, you know, they had at least five years to get to somewhere phenomenal. 
When we did that, it was pure providence that the two companies we landed on were SaltWorks and General Fusion for water and energy respectively, and they both happened to be based in the Vancouver area. We looked at it, at the desalination piece, we looked at it in the sense of a lot of the water that we use in, in steam-assisted gravity drainage, which is typically what most of the new oil sands projects will look like, the water needs to be treated first and a lot of it comes from deep groundwater, which is very old geologic water, hundreds of millions of years old and filled with salt. So we needed to figure out a way to get rid of that. These guys had a revolutionary way of being able to treat it with waste heat and very low grade waste heat, which by the way, for anybody who's dealt with steam, you probably know there's a lot of waste heat kicking around. So we had a lot of that and it all seemed to match up perfectly. Now, what we're seeing is that that was a, a faster runway than was originally anticipated. We weren't expecting them for about four years, but now we're already less than two years they could be on site. And we were pretty sure that that's the confluence of our ability to, to tell them, here are the requirements for this industry, here's what you need to meet a spec, and at the same time their own ability to have worked with the capital that we were able to endow them with earlier on. So there's a couple of key benefits there for all players. So I think that, that shows the benefit for the water side. With regards to general fusion, it's, uh, it is, to coin the term that everybody else uses, it is game changing. If you want to really affect greenhouse gas emissions, you can start with oil, but then you're going to be up against the same issue, which is you're going to have electricity generation from somewhere. So we decided that coal was probably the easier thing to displace. And if you can find a way to do that, then the most logical way to go would be fusion. And uh, after evaluating all of the technologies out there, and, and some of them are pretty far out there, um, both scientifically and rationally, we landed on General Fusion as probably having the best chance. And it was further endorsed by SDTC, who had already committed a certain number of funds, so we were quite happy to, uh, to work with them on the project. You know, our industry is sort of in a very disruptive period. Um, over the last 35 years, you know, volumes to the landfill have dropped 35% or so. Uh, and with the whole sustainability initiatives, corporate sustainability programs, looking at uh, efficient manufacturing and lower packaging, extended producer responsibility where manufacturers want to take a little bit more active role in their products post-consumer. Uh, you know, the last four or five years you've had an influx of capital into the clean tech sector and so you've got, um, you know, a myriad of, of atypical and new uh, competitors that coming into um, our industry and so we, we sort of are looking at our group, uh, our corporate venturing group is really focused on finding uh, those technologies and processes that can help us um, segregate efficiently the materials that are in our waste stream. And so we've uh, spent the last five years looking for those technologies uh, up and down that ecosystem. So uh, it's quite a few. We've got about 40 investments. To I think part of the problem isn't so much at the corporate equity technology development level. I think the problem comes that uh, the values of those companies are directly tied to the infrastructure to the extent that they're infrastructure based around project development, which is very capital intensive, and I think that's where the stall was. I think, I think the early on investments from the VCs worked real well to develop the technologies, uh, but then to, you know, currently, you know, in this current environment of capital constraint, you know, finding $180 million to build a plant that would help commercialize your technology is tough, if not impossible, uh, without strategic uh, help. So we don't just... Um, invest dollars with these companies. I think part of the benefit that uh, waste management in particular has is it has such a vast network of assets, you know, 27,000 trucks, 30, 345 transfer stations. We, uh, you know, we've got so much infrastructure that we can lend to these technology developers that in addition to the, to the equity that we put in, we provide a lot of strategic acceleration to it. When you look at some of the big corporations that operate in this space, you look at a company like General Electric, $150 billion a year worth of revenue, 300,000 employees, 130 countries. If we are ever going to successfully scale this kind of technology, it'll scale through the big corporates that have an appetite for making investments in this space. And so I think that that's the first thing to retain is that, you know, the traditional model of venture capitalism alone, for venture capitalists' sake, 
um, probably needs to get a little rewired and, and really look to the corporate sector to say, you know, how do you guys jump in and put some of your muscle, whether financial muscle or commercialization muscle, behind some of these issues to get them to market. So I, I guess the other point I would make is, you know, within, within General Electric, I think what's been interesting is we've, there's two things that have come together for us that have created just an enormous appetite for this space. On the one hand, I think there's a realization that if you look at some of the mega trends, you know, more people on the planet, more people aspiring to wealthier lifestyles, over time an increased demand for energy, if we continue to produce and consume energy the way we have in the past, ultimately, you know, we, it's not sustainable. And so there's this whole dynamic around needing more energy and being able to produce energy and consume energy in a way that's smarter. So if you take that dynamic and combine it with a fundamental belief, and this one's important as well, um, that our corporation has, that you can, in fact, make money while advantaging the environment, um, and you put those things together, you end up with a business strategy that says, we're going to go solve some of the world's toughest energy challenges while advantaging the environment. And the reason all of that's significant is that it brings a creativity to the table that I don't think previously existed, meaning is that this is all about an ecosystem. So that um, you've an got... An investing ecosystem? It's an investment ecosystem, it's an innovation e ecosystem. So that if you've got players like STTC at the very early end of this, where we're taking higher risk than typically would be taken, um, all the companies that you've listed on stage today have been through an our STTC portfolio companies. Um, and then when we look for people that are nimble, that make good decisions and help coach companies, those will be uh, angel investors and venture capital, because they move a lot faster. No one's asked about time here. Um, and then, as we've heard, once companies have built their value prop, uh, they've begun to understand all about their core customers and markets with the aid of the venture investment, then they will be more suitable um, in many instances for a big corporate play because some of those corporate plays you do have some venture um, but typically it's about their core business and it takes a while for that to sort of work through the corporate system and make sure that they are a reasonable risk reward balance for the corporations which is much tighter frankly um, and less risky generally with the exception of general fusion I have to give Sonovus a big up for that one um, in the venture industry and then we sort of feed on out so I think we have to be aware that we all need to play where we best play and look for the ultimate returns in the market we have to do uh, at least the same if not more with less we have to find ways of taking value out of waste streams reducing costs uh, improving the way that uh, we do everything. All of these efficient, clean technologies are going to improve the productivity of companies. Uh, we need to be hugely successful in seizing our share of the export markets, uh, whether it's South America or Asia. And uh, so regardless of where people started, um, these are real business opportunities, but they're actually real business needs. I don't think the public is there. I mean, North America is a low energy price jurisdiction. When we prove out technologies, they're, they're always more cost effective somewhere offshore than they are in Canada. Uh, the conversation in the media is all about the price of gasoline at the pump. Um, and it isn't about whether we can sustain uh, enough food, whether we can have enough quality of life uh, compared to where we are. And so I think that in fact, if the people of Canada understood more about this, which is why I love this show, I think it's a great way of interfacing the public. If they knew more and spoke up more, you'd see more response um, uh, generally, uh, whether that be from a policy perspective or investments. It's just that the public ain't there, but I think the business is, is definitely moving in the right direction.